Jurassic! Hey everybody, Dr. O here. In this video we're going to cover the second 12, or second six pairs of the 12 cranial nerves. So we're going to start here with cranial nerve 7, the facial nerve. This is a mixed nerve, meaning it has both a sensory and motor function. So big picture, its sensation is going to be to the anterior two-thirds of the tongue, and it's going to be motor to the muscles of facial expression. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Uh, so again, if you want to, it, it, it's, in, it's in charge of the taste receptors on the anterior two-thirds of the tongue, not the entire tongue. So if you want to assess the, the sensory function of this nerve, you would need to um, uh, test the sensation of the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. And then for motor, it's the muscles of facial expression primarily. So what I would do is have someone, you know, make funny faces, right? Crinkle their eyebrows and, and, and do those types of things. So if they can use the muscles of facial expression, then cranial nerve 7 is working. Now it does also have a visceral motor control, so uh, tear and nasal mucous glands and, and some of the salivary glands, so the, 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 there'd be another function there as well. But big picture, it's sensation to the anterior two-thirds of the tongue and motor to the muscles of facial expression. Next, we have the vestibulocochlear nerve, cranial nerve 8. So this is going to have two branches. This is going to be a purely sensory cranial nerve. It's going to have a vestibular branch, branch, which is involved in balance and equilibrium, and the cochlear branch involved in hearing. So you don't, maybe you don't know this yet, but the cochlea is, the, is where we hear, and the vestibule is where balance and equilibrium come from. So the vestibulocochlear nerve, so that's the, like I just said, the vestibular branch is going to control uh, the vestibule there, which you see there in the image on the right, labeled as the saccule and the utricle, that location is going to be the vestibule, and that's going to be where balance and equilibrium come from. Then that cochlear branch, that cool um, cochlear shape there, that's going to be where we hear. So vestibular cochlear branch, we have balance, equilibrium, and hearing. So if you want to assess the function of this cranial nerve, uh, any kind of balance testing, asking questions about balance and, and, and equilibrium, uh, assessing hearing, you know, pretty, pretty easy to do. You can use tuning forks or fingers, these types of things. All right, that's the vestibulo cochlear nerve, cranial nerve 8. Next, we have cranial nerve 9, the glossopharyngeal nerve. This is a mixed nerve that has both a sensory and motor function. So sensation is going to be the posterior third of the tongue. So if you're assessing the sensation of the taste receptors of the tongue, you're actually assessing both cranial nerves 7 and 9. And then for motor, it's going to be the muscles of the pharynx or throat involved in swallowing. So if you want to assess the function of the glossopharyngeal nerve, assess that posterior third of the tongue, and then also anything involved in swallowing. So you can ask to ask a patient to swallow, ask if they're having any difficulty swallowing. Now, swallowing and the gag reflex and these types of things, they really do, you really are assessing the function of more than one cranial nerve, but if you see a problem there, you would, you would know, uh, you'd have it narrowed down where to look. So that's the glossopharyngeal nerve, sensation to the posterior third of the tongue, motor to the muscles involved in swallowing there in your pharynx. Next, we have cranial nerve 10, which many would argue would be the most important cranial nerve. So uh, it's called the vagus nerve, which means wanderer. This is going to be about 75% of the parasympathetic nervous system is this one nerve. This is a mixed nerve with both sensory and motor function. So big picture, it's just all the, all the sensation and organ control uh, of the thoracic and abdomin abdominal pelvic cavity. So it actually has more functions than that, but it, it starts up in the throat. But this is, so sensation, you think, you know, parts of the pharynx, so it shares the job with cranial nerve 9. Uh, the external acoustic canal is going to be involved here, but real big picture, just sensation to the visceral organs of the thoracic and abdominal pelvic cavities. Then the same thing with motor. It does play a role in controlling the palate in your pharynx, so the gag reflex would actually be assessing cranial nerves 9 as well as 10. But then the digestive, respiratory, and cardiovascular systems in your thoracic and abdominal cavities. So it just has a massive amount of control. So that's cranial nerve 10, vagus nerve, or the wanderer. Next, we have cranial nerve 11, which is the accessory nerve, also known as the spinal accessory nerve. This is going to be a purely motor nerve. Its big function is that it helps control the muscles of the upper back, specifically, and the ones I'll ask you to know, the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius muscles. But it does control some other mus muscles because there are two branches. So the internal branch actually joins the vagus nerve and helps control the palate, pharynx, and larynx. So now we're looking at the gag reflex and swallowing being cranial nerves 9, 10, and 11. But we, we really care about the external branch, which travels down and controls these two muscles here, sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius. So if you have someone, you know, shrug their shoulders to assess the function of the trapezius for the sternocleidomastoid, I would always have a patient try to flex their head against my hands here and then also rotate because remember one sternocleidomastoid muscle rotates the head both together, neck flexion. So simple muscle testing can assess the function of cranial nerve 11, the accessory or spinal accessory nerve.
Last one, cranial nerve 12, is the hypoglossal nerve, glossal meaning tongue. This is going to be a purely motor cranial nerve that controls the muscles of the tongue. So, um, so the hypoglossal nerve controls voluntary control over the movement of the tongue. Obviously, your tongue does a lot of things um, subconsciously or involuntarily when you're, when you're chewing and swallowing, these type of things, but voluntary control of the tongue. So probably the simp simplest one to test. Have someone stick their tongue out at you. If it comes straight out, cranial nerve 12 is working fine. If one of the two, uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the two of the cranial nerve 12 pair are not functioning properly, the tongue will deviate towards the weak side. So if, I've seen this. If someone sticks their tongue out and it shoots off to the right, that means the the cranial nerve 12 um, on the weak side is not functioning properly. Okay, so those are your 12 pairs of cranial nerves. Make sure you watch both parts of this video series. I hope this helps. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.